me start recording. All right, perfect. Okay, so hello and welcome everybody to yet another episode of ABC of Remedies. This is what Prajita and I started doing sometime last year, where we talk about the very basics of each remedy and try to kind of make it more clinical, make it more practical for all of you. Uh, we try and pick up remedies that are common, uncommon, rare, and try and dissect it and uh, integrate it from a both classical as well as a contemporary perspective. So we will do the remedy Nux Moss Chata today. That's the remedy we have chosen for today. And um, we'll do some basics of the remedy. And then we will kind of uh, do one case so that it's a little bit more clear for all of us. All right. So let's dive straight in. I will go ahead and share my screen. So from my perspective, Nux Mosada is a fairly uh, simple remedy. I think it was part of our curriculum while studying. So it's not a very, very rare remedy. However, it seems to be a remedy which is less frequently used. Uh, isn't it so? So let's try and see if we understand this remedy, if you can find a new perspective about this remedy. And then if you can, uh, you know, uh, see from your old cases, if there's something which has some resonance or, you know, uh, something becomes a little bit more clearer so that, you know, you don't miss this remedy when you see it next in your practice. So Nux Moss Chata uh, belongs to the plant kingdom, as is very evident. And it's from the first subclass of the dicotyledon group. Um, the subclass one and the group is magnolias okay and basically it's uh, in this order we have different families we have the magnolia family the nutmeg family and the custard apple family uh, however the most well known is the nux moschata we have magnolia we have uh, you know myristica these are some other remedies from this uh, this group or this order uh, but we'll focus on Nux Moss Chata today. So the main idea of this group, Magnolids, is the main sensation that has been studied and understood is that idea of being confused, bewildered, beclouded, strange. You know, everything outside seems suddenly so strange. It's so confusing. I don't know where I am. What am I doing? I, I'm not able to... It's just, what? I mean, uh, you know, like lost in confusion. It's so strange. Everything is so strange. And then they feel not part of it. They feel isolated. Uh, they feel disconnected. And, you know, they don't understand the dynamic of how to react, how to relate, how to connect, how to function, etc. And oftentimes, their reaction is to withdraw their reaction is to go within. This is the understanding of superclass one as well, to withdraw, to withdraw into their familiar shell. So, you know, and hence we see these keynote symptoms of stupefaction and sleepiness and drowsiness and collapse. Um, so it's completely, you know, shutting out, completely withdrawing out and going in their own inner world because outside I'm unable to, you know, adapt. I'm unable to, to function. This is the whole idea of Nux Moss Charter. If we understand this from a developmental perspective, so as I said, subclass one, yeah. So the main reaction of subclass one is to withdraw. We under we understand this not from a developmental perspective also, but also from a superclass perspective. The whole idea is to go within. However. It's very, very pronounced. It's very exaggerated because not only is it in the subclass one, but it is also in the row one. So it is in the womb stage from a developmental perspective. So it's premature. 
so i this world i am still not ready for this world yeah i am still a uh, you know before birth before you know i have not developed the resources to interact with this world and i'm so naive i'm so undefined i'm so ill prepared that i feel dazed i feel puzzled and i feel i don't know what to expect what not to expect what is expected out of me i'm completely confused i don't understand anything and i'm unable to participate i feel i don't have the strength or the resources or the capability to interact and deal with this world hmm? and everything feels odd they feel estranged and everything penetrates they are unable to create boundaries unable to create boundary is like the whole subclass right it's not just max moschata you will see the same thing in dananculesi you will see the same thing in so many other remedies in this group in this first subclass but here it's the most pronounced because it's just the beginning yeah it's the raw one so premature not ready and hence a tendency to retreat within their own world so the beauty of understanding um, you know understanding the evolution of how these natural resources or substances came understanding the personal evolution model it somehow also helps us understand why that sensation is there in that particular fact so from an evolution perspective you know oh my god this is you know just the very beginning of the dicotyledon it's still the womb stage so hence confusion hence bewildered i'm not ready i'm not prepared so you know it makes a little bit more sense then it's not about just rotating the sensation and the active reaction and the passive reaction it makes a little bit more sense you can understand why that particular sensation in that particular organ and because they are unable to interact and they feel all this you know all these sensations often times waking up in the morning is very difficult because what is waking up in the morning from my sleep i wake up and now i have to deal with the world i have to go out to do you know work i have to interact with people and that's very difficult so a lot of remedies in this group have morning aggravation uh they feel weak they feel dazed they feel disorganized they feel unstable powerless ungrounded forgetful fuzzy dizzy confused unfocused these are all the words that you could probably think for this hmm? and the idea of going inside because outside is so difficult so i natural my natural response is to go within so i will not go out of the house you know i will stay in the bed getting out of the bed is difficult i don't know what to do doctor i can't get out of my bed it just feels so so very difficult yeah so going sleep itself is a kind of you know like what do babies do in the womb they just sleeping sleep itself is withdrawing so a lot of this stupefaction withdrawal dullness drowsiness these are all signs of the womb stage of development okay so when we look at nux moschata and we look at you know some of the hardcore clinical books that we have studied you know books which we, uh, which are clinically proven time and again uh, if we take fart up the first you know in generalities it says disturb profoundly disturbed sensory mind and nerves causing exaltation of senses and nervous sensitivity hmm? uh when any come whatever it is whether it's digestion female organ system whatever may be the complaint where the main idea is of drowsiness where the concomitant is drowsiness where the accompaniment is drowsiness or it is followed by drowsiness one must think of nox moschat another important key note concomitant is thirstlessness thirstlessness there's lots of dryness but without thirst so much dryness in the mouth but there's no thirst so that is a very very characteristic symptom the mouth is dry the tongue is dry the eyes is dry all the mucous membranes are dry but with no thirst 
and because they're all dull and dizzy and confused and you know like that the sensorium and the nerves are affected you know feel as if drunk or you know they stagger while walking um it's it's a very good remedy you can think of epilepsy with consciousness in depression in grief in ill effects of fright mental exertion suppressed eruptions and a very funny um humming buzzing sensation in the body what does Alan say? It kind of confirms, you know, in suitable in women and children of nervous hysterical temperament with dry skin who rarely perspire. So even perspiration is not there. So much dry, dryness is there. And then any ailment is accompanied by drowsiness and sleepiness. Complaints cause sleepiness. And they are absent-minded. You have to ask the same question again and again to them. They are lost in their own world. Okay. Then this is the keynote for, for Nuxmosata. Great dryness of mouth. Tongue so dry it adheres to the roof of the mouth. Probably this we remember, right? I mean, this is one of our, uh, you know, MCQ questions. Saliva seem like cotton. Throat is dry, stiffened, but there is no thirst. That's very important. So if you take the repertory, if you look at the complete repertory, generalities, faintness, fainting easily, out of the 17 remedies, you will find Nux Moschata. Hmm? From the slightest sight of wound or blood, uh, one could kind of, um, um, that could aggravate, you will see Nux Moschata. It's very difficult for them. And if you see the myism, it's typhoid myism in Nux Moschata. Right? So it's the same thing. So Boric also is kind of saying the same thing okay, again and again. Lots of stupor, lot of intoxication. Yeah? So it's the repetition, which is kind of reiterating the fact. Also indicated in diarrhea, especially for in summers from cold drinks. And the concomitant is always dryness of mouth and thirstless. If you look at some of the rubrics, uh, if you reverse repertoire, you will see very interesting things. Huh? Stupefication, of course, one would expect, um, but also startling. Hmm? Startling is a very, very uh, important phenomenon. We know that in carbon remedies, yeah. But all these womb stage remedies, startling is very, very important. You will see that in a lot of womb stage remedies. You will see that in boron. You will see that in carbon. Um, and again, in all these womb stages across the kingdom, you will see startling as an important symptom. A lot of sadness, lots of depression. And if you see morning aggregate, morning is going out and conquering the world. It's very, very difficult for them. So you see Nux Moschata. Passive, no power to resist. Hmm? Being led anywhere, you can lead them anywhere. Okay, wherever you take me, that's fine. No very naive, very ill-prepared, very, very dependent. You will see Nux Moschata there. Indecision, indolence, indifference. You will see Nux Moschata. So we have, oh, as I said, you know, a few other remedies. Asminia, which is known for mostly apte, etc. That's the ringworm myism. Myristica is tubocular myism. Uh, Nux Moschata is typhoid myism. And then magnolia, which we have, which has the malaria myism. So these are some of the other remedies. You could differentiate them from a myism perspective, or you know, from a keynote characteristic perspective. So let's, uh, with this background, let's dive into a case. This is a case of a lady with depression. Uh, I think she came to us in the first COVID. Nudev. And um, uh, she, 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 it was very difficult for her to communicate and a lot of history the husband gave. And uh, there was a stage where, you know, the husband had to send the wife to the mother's house because, you know, she was just unable to do 
and support the household and you know with the son studying and the husband working it was very difficult for them to care for the wife because she was not able to function she was not able to get out of the bed so she needed more care and you know a lot of uh, supervision and support uh, so she says uh, it's very, very difficult for me in the morning. I feel lazy. I have no mood to work. And by the time afternoon comes, you know, bo afternoon, I'm able to do some work. I can cook a little bit. I can wash some vessels, etc. And because it was COVID time, houses were not allowed um, and there were some restrictions. So she says, I have to do everything, but I'm unable to. I just feel like sleeping. I don't feel like eating, you know, at least till noon, nothing. But maybe in the evening, some appetite comes. Morning is the worst part of the day, she says. But at night, the condition is slightly better. I can watch a little bit TV. I can, you know, uh, see something on the television, do some work. And it feels that the time is passing so slowly, you know. It feels as if everything is dragging around. Uh, and she says everything. My blood reports are normal. My allopathic that doctor said that probably you have depression. And, you know, I'm, I, she was on antidepressants and some vitamins, etc. And he said that a lot of people during COVID are going through this. So, you know, you're probably one of those cases. Um, so she's taking, uh, you know, uh, this medication. She says, I am at home only, so I don't really know if I'm really scared of COVID. Uh, but I don't feel that I have depression, you know. I don't know if this is depression. My doctor says that my mind is disturbed, but I don't know if this is really true. I don't know. Can it be depression, doctor? I don't know why this happened. What is the reason, you know? So she was confused. I don't know whether, you know, I... I I'm just unable to understand. I just feel like sleeping. In the morning, I feel so lazy. I wake up late, then take lunch, then go back to sleep. Then evening, I'll have some snacks. And after that, I feel a little fresh. Then I probably would go out for some walk. Uh, but in the whole day, half of the time I'm sleeping, I feel so lethargic, so lazy. I feel very weak. I feel lazy even to cook. Both, I even don't like to take a bath. My legs feel heavy. I just don't know what to do. My legs pain. My eyes feel heavy. I even sleep early. I sleep by 10 p.m. Today I woke up at 8.30. I didn't eat anything. I'm having a little bit of acidity. Yeah, so a lot of this, she says. Um, uh, and she says that, you know, uh, she has to wake up in the middle of the night a few times, maybe to use the washroom, etc. Uh, she's comfortable sleeping on the left side. Um, and sometimes she has to, you know, keep both. Uh, uh, I mean, she has to keep turning between the right and left. So we're trying to see if there's any peculiarity, if any PQRS comes, to, you know, in the sleep. Because sleep is the main symptom that she had. Uh, so, you know, again, in terms of thermals, in terms of blankets, in which side she sleeps, etc. Uh, we were not able to, you know, there was no like really, um, you said no, no real juice or no real punch anywhere. So we had to, you know, we tried inquiring and we had to then forego of that. Uh, then she says it started like one to two months since COVID. And the whole idea, then we thought, okay, what about COVID? Let's explore COVID if that's the, you know, that's the, from, an, uh, from a time perspective, that's when all the complaints started. So she says, I was thinking, when will it all get over? When we will start our routine lives again? And in general fear about COVID. I was taking care of myself. When my throat was paining, I would drink warm water because my son is also so young. He's young, he's in the ninth standard. So I would take all the precautions because, you know, nobody should get affected. Nobody should get, get affected because of me. I was just taking care of myself in general. On television, on WhatsApp, there was news about Corona everywhere. I used to feel scared. 
I get cold in general frequently. So I was taking homeopathic treatment, uh, but my homeopath passed away recently. So in general, I have a tendency for cold. I can have cold all year long. So I was worried that what if I catch cold and what if I'm susceptible to cold? In general, how is the mood? She says, not good these days. I just feel lazy and I just want to sleep. Maximum time is spent in sleeping. What do you mean by not good, I ask. And she says, I don't feel good. I don't feel fresh. I don't feel like getting out of the bed and making breakfast. There's no excitement. And any tension, anything that you're worried about, anything on the top of your mind, she says nothing. So she says that my brother came to see me and he saw me so unwell. My, din, my, my son was not going to school actively because there was you know online schooling going on that time. So, you know, just for a change, we came here to my mother's house. And after coming here also, my symptoms didn't change drastically. So, this is all we could take from the chief complaint. So, then now we have to explore, right? So, in a way, this is a one-sided disease. No, everything is, uh, you have only one symptom, which is about sleep and depression and unable to, listlessness. Uh, unable to want uh, to do anything, no interest in anything. This is this is all we are getting. So now we have to take the bigger picture, isn't it? We have to talk about nature. So we ask her about her nature. She says, I talk less. I go to social gatherings. I do have my contacts, my friends, my family. But I'm very limited in how much I talk and how much I interact with people. I th think a lot about what will happen, what will happen in the future. Will my son do well in his studies? How will he get through his exams? So I kind of think and anticipate a lot. I'm very, you know, my son, her son was in the ninth grade when she met him. So, you know, the next year is going to be the board exam. How is he going to do? What college he will get into, et cetera, et cetera. My son is my main point of worry. You know, he, we are in the morning, I have to wake up, I have to wake him up, I have to prepare his food, I have to take care of his tuitions. So I, my, my mind is around him. How am I going to do? Is there any, if there is any function at home, like if there's a family get together or if we have any, any function at home, I'm also worried about the preparation. It's a very big deal for me. It's not an easy task. Like how will I take care of the guests? What am I going to prepare? I don't take everything lightly. I feel everything should go well. Yeah. So I, uh, she takes a lot of time to prepare. She will do a lot of work, uh, and it doesn't come easy. So you get from her talk, you can understand that you know a simple task of some, of some family members coming home is also too much for her, and she has to prepare. She has to organize herself. She, you know, one day before she has to put everything in place. So that there shouldn't be any mistake. Everything should go well. So there's a lot of nervousness, a lot of timidity in her. In general, I take tension a lot. You know, I'm worried for small, small things. So small things worry her. Uh, what if everything doesn't go well? Everything should go smoothly. Nothing should go wrong because of me. Everybody should be happy with everything. Everybody in my family is very supportive. Everybody will help me. But in general, I, you know, she's very timid and anticipatory. She says, I've done my graduation and, you know, I worked for nine years after my marriage. And when I became pregnant, I had to leave the job. And then I'm trying to now that my son has grown up a little bit. I'm trying to, you know, look for jobs. But I'm not very desperate. I'm happy with what I have and, you know, um, there is no much worry about anything. So she's not like a go-getter. She, she's okay. She's trying to look for a job if she gets good. Otherwise, she's happy what she's doing. I like to listen to music, watch TV. Uh, I do some, you know, I do kitchen work. I listen to some songs. I like some old songs, old Bollywood songs. So, you know, from hobbies, interests, we're trying to see if something comes up. In childhood, she was very less talkative. She's a little emotional person. And she's very worried about her family. Her family comes first. Her son comes first. She worries a lot about her, her son and his, her, and his future. She's very attached to her son. He was 
he came after a long time post marriage so it was he was a precious baby so to say i live for my son she says my husband too but my son is very important to me i can't imagine my life without him at this stage she says my son is very dependent on me but nowadays i am teaching him to do basic kitchen work because he should also learn no being a boy he should understand a little bit of cooking etc but otherwise he is very busy in studies and i have to take care of him a lot i am dependent on everyone just like he is dependent on me yeah he is very good in his studies he gets like above 90% but you know i have to be on top of his studies my doesn't my husband doesn't show so much interest in his studies so i am the one who has to look after everything is his homework done is his schooling done is he going to the tuition class properly so you know he she uh in a way she is uh, what is the right word she's projecting so much on the son that the son is you know ninth grade is not a very young child like 15 years probably so 15 or 16 years almost probably but you know she has to take care of everything you know he she is not she takes care of each and everything because she thinks he is completely dependent on her but it's a projection you know she is also completely dependent and her life revolves only around that but that's her life that is her world on the left side no on the left side these left sided remedies these home stage remedies these less level up remedies their world is very small it's only about them probably their first family their home and the very small circle that's their world they don't care about what's happening in you know in world news what's happening in politics that's too much distant world they have nothing to do with it their world revolves around a very very small um diameter it's very very small la bigger things environment social norms or what happened in you know us or what's happening in the in gulf area or in africa it it doesn't it doesn't concern them you know it's too much for them fears she says yes she has fear of water i don't know how to swim but there's no fear of darkness maybe a little bit ghost uh that's what she fears sometimes she watches horror but otherwise she's scared she's very scared of giant wheels she will not go in amusement park on these roller coasters um heights she says not so much i can go on mountains etc but roller coasters is something she doesn't like she likes reading books but these days she's not reading uh she likes to read mythological books family stories thrillers suspense stories uh you know she you she you know read about lord rama lord krishna that's what she likes um uh, she also likes she said she likes suspenses and thrillers so we ask about that she says you know we don't know what happens next so it's very you know it generates curiosity and i like that she likes to be in nature trees gardens flowers she likes that she loves rose and she likes gardening and then we start asking some direct questions in a way to kind of you know fine tune where we are uh, are you sensitive if somebody calls you she says yes i feel why are they saying this they shouldn't say like this and i cry easily i can't control my tears Yeah, so there's sensitivity which we were trying to ascertain. Dream she did not remember a lot. We had these some physical generals that you see on the screen, and she's thirstless. Then we speak to the husband, and the husband says she is only sleeping. She has no energy. The condition is worse in the morning. I have sent her to her mother's place, as she is unable to cope with anything. doctor says that she is has depression she is unable to do even basic household chores in general also she is not very independent so the husband confirms she is not independent she gets nervous e easily if there is a family function or if there is son's exam she get very nervous she will not know how to handle things under pressure she needs direction on even small small matter she will you know 
consult me she will seek my guidance or she will ask me to come along things like that she is very sensitive yeah so we gave her the remedy uh not much data and you know you can see she started feeling better slowly gradually uh, we started tapering her antidepressants uh, and very very gradually over many months you know we reduced the dose half then we made the dose every alternate days and then every third day and eventually we stopped her antidepressants completely and she did really really well so what did we see in the case we saw a lot of sleepiness sleep that is overpowering then we see aggravation in the morning and better in the evening then we see sensitivity yeah so we see the plant like sensitivity which came up and then we saw that the reaction was to withdraw to sleep in covid it happened you know where everybody had to be in the home she numbed herself she withdrew and she is very very dependent and you know small small things somebody shouted a function is there son's exam is there you know small small her life is trifles life is small small and you know she is very dependent needs guidance and at the same time right now with the chief complaint she feels that the time is only dragging nothing interests me listless dragging indifference and all of that has come up so if you take all this and we just put it in the repertory also um we see nox moschata is coming up um uh, very predominantly so from a development perspective very dependent confusion spaced out no borders idea of sub class 1 and super class 1 is of you know trifles is a big thing like ran in kilesi withdrawing dependence sleepiness sensitivity so you see that quality of sub class 1 and then we see sensitivity and reactivity as the main idea there was no issue of structure did she talk about what i lack what i need i need support that was not her focus uh, her focus is something happens and it affects me yeah was there any issue of survival was there any me versus you no so you see simple plant like sensitivity and reactivity and in the magnolias in the magnolias what we see outside is bewildering confusing and what i do is i stupefy i sleep i withdraw into my familiar shell and in this case also along with the sleepiness we saw time passes slowly we saw thirstlessness we didn't see dryness so predominantly in her yeah so this is the case i just will pause here for a moment and see if there are any questions or thoughts from anybody any questions anybody okay would we do we have some time we'll do a short case a very small case of nox moschata a different presentation so here the main idea of the case was of dip, uh, dysphagia difficulty in swallowing swallowing etc let me make this full screen an 80 year old man and uh, his main complaint was he had cancer of the larynx old cancer of the larynx and he was treated with for it and you know he underwent all the surgery and whatever the radiotherapy uh, and stuff like that and he also is a chronic hypertensive patient and um, because of the radiotherapy uh, his throat complaints means he was not able to speak properly it was very difficult for him to speak there was a lot of hoarseness we had given him radium brome to overcome the side effects of radiotherapy uh before starting the constitutional remedy and that had really helped yeah so this is something that we do in a lot of cases and um, um we can kind of confirm that this is clinically it helps a lot okay so the complaints were extreme dryness of the throat and the mouth as soon as he wakes up and it's very difficult for him to swallow food and there's a feeling like as if you know he would choke on the food because there's no saliva that's get generated so it's very difficult for him to you know chew food you know everything is dry everything gets stuck and it becomes all messy 
the food he feels that he's unable to swallow like it's like it doesn't move ahead there is no salivary juices so he has to constantly keep drinking water so he's having a morsel he will drink some water as if he has to put by drinking water he has to force his food down the esophagus and then he would have a lot of pain while eating a lot of dry cough um and all this is aggravated in the morning and he feels then the food okay he has now pushed the food from the mouth to the throat but he then feels that food gets stuck here as if you know there's a ball here which gets stuck in the throat so he finds a lots of dysphagia so what's the experience even my voice is almost gone i'm not able to speak properly not able to eat properly you know my speech is affected nobody and it's like genuinely like if you know like when we take case also it's very difficult for us to understand what uncle is saying and you know we have to really listen very very carefully or uh, to decipher sometimes he would have to also type some words very difficult so he would type and show us that this is what i mean so he says so nobody understands me you know um, i feel very sad i don't feel like you know even my daughter doesn't understand me so i've decided i'll keep quiet i remain shut i don't talk a lot i don't go out a lot i don't mix up with people and all the time you know the his wife and his daughter is uh, like his uh, child i mean he's a very old gentleman so is i mean he's a grandfather and you know things like that so uh, his children his daughter they all live in they don't live in india they live abroad and they keep checking on him and you know whenever they come their constant complaint whenever they would come to the clinic is that you know uh, daddy is always on the phone you know he's constantly like he's addicted to phone like almost like an addiction the 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 daughter would come and tell us that please do something he's constantly addicted and if you see uh, addiction to the phone going inside the phone uh, is also a sort of withdrawal because you are completely putting yourself in something and you're disconnecting no i i don't i don't want to interact with the people who are around me and world around me i am just withdrawing into the phone so that tendency to addiction to phone to withdrawal is also very very um subclass one superclass one magnolid feature okay he sometimes has dizziness heaviness uh, he has a lot of weakness it gets difficult for him to get out of the bed and there's some salty taste in the mouth he said so if we see extreme dryness of mouth and tongue sleepiness dizziness as a concomitant and to going inside the the mechanism or the dynamic the basic response is to withdraw uh you see you will you know you can think of nox mos chata and if you very very interestingly this was a retrospective thing if you see in the internal throat cancer also you know uh, there are not a lot of remedies there you will also find nox mos chata there so if you look at all these uh, symptoms along with you know changeable hoarse voice salty taste in mouth sleepiness dryness ball sensation in the throat nox mos chata comes very beautifully and he did really really well okay so these were the two cases and this was what i wanted to share with all of you regarding nox mos chata i hope it is clear and i hope you are able to practice and you know prescribe this remedy a little bit more frequently i will invite some questions at this stage i see something on the chat dr sajni is asking how is the compensation getting freely with everyone and opening up which is most uncomfortable for the patient so you see compensation in general if you understand the word compensation and the comp the idea of compensation in the plant kingdom is uh, uh the idea of you know it's an acquired skill you know it's something that they it's in a way also a survival mechanism you know? so they compensate so they don't uh, live at the level of sensation they they cover it up like you know almost like psychotic miasm you no know, i have to cover up i have to avoid feeling that way 
So I'll compensate. So for example, a lot of people who have stage fear, you have to go to the childhood to go to the uncompensated stage. So they will say, oh, I used to get very nervous. I would stammer and I would feel people will laugh at me and I would sweat a lot and all. But now I'm in the corporate. I have to give PowerPoint presentations and I have to talk in front of the CEO and I can do it well. It's something that I have acquired. I learned. Yeah, so it's a compensation. So, you know, um, so for example, calcarea. Calcarea adults very difficult to kind of get, they will not say easily that they have fear of robbers, fear of darkness, fear of ghosts and things like that. They would not say that. You, If you ask them fears, they say, no, no, I don't have any fears. And then, then you have to say, Ari, but everybody has fears. I'm sure you also have some, no, 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 I have no fears. Okay, tell us any fears that you have in the child. Then they will say some. So it's like that. So, you know, the compensation in Magnolia, it's like, I mean, otherwise they would be stupefied, they would withdraw, et cetera, et cetera. But the compensation will be like, no, no, I will go out and I will deal with the world, et cetera. It is just a compensated state. You will have to unfilter the real self. Okay. Okay. So then there is some request for showing the repertorization chart. Okay, I can share my screen once again. Okay, I'll share my screen. Yeah, this one. All right. Anything else before we close for today? Perfect then. So this was short and sweet. Uh, please let me know what other remedies would you like to see on ABC of Remedies. And then reach out to Asmita or Dr. Taskeen um, if you need anything else or if you would want to participate in any of the offerings that we have at Musings. Until we meet again, bye-bye, take care and see you soon. Bye.